We're going to be doing a couple of things in this video. We're going to be talking about the set of real numbers. And near the end of the video, we're going to complete example one. For example one, we're going to classify each number below as either rational or irrational. Now, in an earlier video, we spoke about rational numbers. So I'm just going to quickly revise what that is. Now, the symbol for the set of rational numbers is the letter Q. Now, within the set of rational numbers, there were a couple of other sets as well. We had our natural numbers, the symbol for which is N, and this included our whole numbers such as 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. To be more specific, it was our positive whole numbers, which then brings us to the set of integers, which has the letter Z. These were whole numbers as well. They included the set of natural numbers, as well as some other numbers, your negative whole numbers, such as negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, and so on. That brings us to the rational numbers. Now, the rational numbers included all of these other numbers. It included the positive whole numbers, as well as our negative whole numbers. But it extended these numbers so that we could have things such as decimals, percentages, and fractions. So in our set of rational numbers, we have things such as 2.1, a decimal. We have a fraction such as 3 over 4, or even percentages such as 15%. We can even have negative fractions or negative percentages if we so choose, or even recurring decimals such as 0 0.38 where the 8 is recurring. Now if you're wondering whether or not a number is rational, all you need to do is check if it can be represented as a fraction. A rational number is basically a number that can be represented as a fraction. Take for example 15%. This can be represented as the fraction 15 over 100. Now, I need to be a little bit more specific when I say fraction. I mean a fraction where the top and bottom number are both whole numbers. All right, what about 2.1? Well, that can be represented as 21 over 10. Therefore, 2.1 must be a rational number. Even our recurring decimal here can be represented as a fraction we can represent it as 35 over 90. Notice that both the top and bottom number are whole numbers. I can prove this using a calculator. 35 divide 90 will give me 0 0.3 with the 8 repeating. So if all the rational numbers are numbers that can be represented as a fraction, where the top and bottom number are whole numbers, what about numbers that cannot be represented as a fraction? So we need another set of numbers, a set of numbers that are completely separate to our rational numbers. What do you think this set of numbers is called? Well, if we have our rational numbers over here on the left, then on the right, we have our set of irrational numbers. Makes sense, right? So what do our irrational numbers look like? Well, there's a couple of things we need to look for. So first of all, it needs to be a number that doesn't terminate. So a number that does not terminate. What, what does that mean? Well, it means that it goes on forever. Now we need to be careful with this because there are actually numbers that do not terminate in our set of rational numbers. Take for example 0 0.38 recurring. That number doesn't terminate, it goes on forever. So we actually need a second dot point here to define irrational numbers. Not only do these numbers not terminate or go on forever, but they also can't have a recurring decimal or a set of recurring decimals. So, so we will write here no recurring decimal. And I'm going to write, when I say decimal, I'm going to put an S in brackets because sometimes we have more than one decimal that's recurring. So what are some examples of irrational numbers? Well, there's one that you all should know, and that's pi. Pi is a number that goes on forever. So we'll bring up pi now. As soon as I find it, here we go. 
Uh, this number goes on forever. It does not terminate. And not only does it not terminate, but there's no recurring decimal here. The, the pattern is completely random. So what are some other irrational numbers other than pi? Well, to find other irrational numbers, we need to use the radical symbol. And in case you're wondering what that is, basically it's your square root sign. So square root 2, it can be other things such as cube roots. You could find the cube root of uh, 5, for example. Let's check that on the calculator. The square root of 2, you will see that you've got a number that does not terminate. It goes on forever. And there's no pattern with our decimals here. We even said the cube root of 5. So here we've got the cube root symbol, so the cube root of 5. Once again, you get a number that does not terminate, goes on forever, and there's no pattern with the decimals. You can come up with numbers using the radical that belong to the set of rational numbers. And a really good example of that would be the square root of 4, because the square root of 4 just equals 2, and that can be represented as 2 over 1. So the square root of 4 does belong to our set of rational numbers here. Now, you might have noticed that the title for this video was Real Numbers. So if we're talking about rational numbers and irrational numbers, why have we called this Real Numbers? Well, what I need to do here is I need to clean up a few things. I need to get rid of this and, and this. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the square root of 4 here under the natural numbers because that's where it belongs and I'm going to draw another oval here and I need to send it behind these two sets of numbers. This brings us to the set of real numbers so this large oval is called our set of real numbers and this one actually has a symbol it's the symbol R with that kind of stroke to the left here the set of real numbers includes all the rational numbers as well as all the irrational numbers. So it brings all the numbers that we use in mathematics under one set of numbers, our set of real numbers. Now some of you might be feeling quite content all of a sudden, going, oh, we've finally been able to give a name for all the numbers we use in maths. But there are other numbers. There are other numbers that are known as the imaginary numbers. Now, we're not going to delve into those numbers, but just to give you a little taster, an imaginary number might be something such as the square root of negative 1, which is a number that does not really exist. Because if you put the square root of negative 1 in a calculator, you get an error. Anyway, we're not going to delve into those numbers Let's just stick with the set of real numbers here. Anyway, I did promise you that I would go through example one, so we'll do that now. It says that we need to classify the following real numbers as either rational or irrational. All right, so we'll start with question A, 3.2. We can classify this as being rational. Now, we can just use the symbol Q, and we put the symbol Q next to this. The reason it's rational is because it can be represented as a fraction. So I could represent 3.2 as 32 over 10. All right, now looking at question B. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the calculator to help me here. What's the square root of 5? Notice that I get a number that goes on forever. It doesn't terminate. That's the first pointer we spoke about. And there's no pattern here. There's no recurring decimal. So this one has to be irrational. Now, I don't have a symbol for irrational numbers, so I'm just going to have to write irrational. Question C now. We've already mentioned that pi is an irrational number because it has a non-terminating decimal, a decimal that goes on forever, and there's no recurring pattern. So we're going to write irrational. All right, moving on to question D, we have a non-terminating decimal here, a decimal that goes on forever, but we have a recurring pattern. 
and if there is a recurring pattern then it's not irrational so this one has to be rational we'll put down q now moving on to question e you'll notice that we have a radical here we've got the cube root sign and quite often people assume it's going to be irrational because usually if you see a radical it's going to be an irrational number but we need to check it on the calculator first because that's not always the case so the cube root of 8 is actually 2 this is a terminating number so we need to write q this number is rational moving on to question f if it can be represented as a fraction then it must be rational q next we have question g we've got the square root of 4 over 9 once again if you see that radical quite often we assume it's going to be irrational but we need to check that first now when you have a fraction you can split the square root sign in two we can make this the square root of 4 over the square root of 9 now the square root of 4 is 2 so we get 2 at the top and the square root of 9 is 3 so we get 2 over 3 you might notice that we now have a fraction where both the numerator and the denominator are whole numbers so this is actually rational q and finally moving on to question h you notice that we've got square root of 56 and then a negative sign out the front so bringing up our calculator here we've got the negative sign and then the square root sign and then under that 56 and we get a negative number and you notice that it's not a terminating decimal it goes on forever and there's no recurring pattern here so we're going to write down that this one is irrational just a little side note uh, if that negative was under the square root sign then we would have got an error on the calculator which means it wouldn't have been irrational it also would not have been rational either anyway that concludes our video on real numbers remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video